The man appeared to be in his mid-twenties. Long, thick black hair, tied with a band, flowed smoothly over his shoulders, unaffected even by the wind. His face was well-proportioned, and his piercing brown eyes seemed to delve into one's very soul. The Taoist wore a blue robe with golden edges and a golden bird embroidered on his chest, soaring upwards. Those marked him as a representative of a phoenix clan, which ruled the southern part of our empire, including all of its tears, even ours. But what caught my eye the most was the leather belt to which a jian and a small pouch were attached. A spatial artifact. I had only heard of such things, but I had never come across one in my twelve years. According to my mother, no one had such a treasure in the entire Tier Zero, not just our province. Yet here it was, hanging casually from a Taoist belt like some insignificant trinket. I would have worn such a valuable item on a string around my neck, under my clothes, to prevent theft. Junior, you have ten minutes left, the man said irritably, disregarding my greeting. He had every right to do so, of course. Would I greet roadside ants waving their antennae at me? I'm done with my duties, Elder. We can depart immediately, my father replied, his demeanor as calm as if he conversed with representatives of the first tier every day. The strange Taoist turned and strode towards the self-propelled carriages belonging to House Wang that stood nearby, screaming opulence. I'd never seen their like before. High canopies shielded the passengers from Iris's scorching rays, dust, and prying eyes, while the shimmering air around the carriage indicated that spirit stones were in use. Was that for extra protection, I wondered? Or to keep the air cool? Whoever owned such carriages didn't seem to worry about energy expenditure. We set off. It wasn't far from Baron to Khaled, about fifteen miles, a distance our carriage could cover in an hour. Such self-propelled carriages were rare in our tier. Our province had only two, ours and Prefect Sarin's. Most folks in our province had to rely on horse-drawn carriages, exposed as they were to the elements and the constant threat of wild beasts, constantly fearing that one of those might decide to snack on their horses, forcing them to walk the rest of the way. No one knew how Prefect Sarin had gotten one of these precious things, which were crafted with enormous care by skilled inner-tier artificers. As for my father, he had received his as a reward for making the dark forest a safer place in general, not just for vanquishing the great white wolf, whose head was now a trophy decorating our wall. What a pity I hadn't been born yet. We'd have done enough heroic deeds to get two carriages. Elder, I inquired in some thirty minutes, surprised, Instead of heading straight home, we had slowed near a small clearing where House Wang's carriages had stopped. Junior, you must prove I'm not wasting my time on you, my father stated. Elder Guerian of the Phoenix Clan desired to see three bouts between the tournament champion and his protégés. No information about them has been given, but they are definitely inner-tier noble house scions, seeing as how they're still unaffiliated with any school— 